Okay. Thank you guys for joining. We're going to talk about LinkedIn company pages today. I'm Stephanie Marone. This is me. Um, and let me just advance. Um, Jim, somebody else, do me a favor and just tell me you can see me that I advance the slides. Yes, and Jim, do me a favor. Can you text me if you can't see me uh, moving the slides? Anybody who has my cell phone number, because that's probably the easiest way. Okay, so I'm just gonna move this down. Okay, so this is me, guys. I, a lot of you know me, obviously. Um, if you're not on my mailing list, um, let me know. You can get on my mailing list. Um, you can find me on all of these places. Um, these are all the places at which I've worked. I've been uh, consulting for the last year and a half and actually it's going really well, which is great. So um, I work a lot with law firms, obviously, and a lot of companies that serve law firms, although I do work with some brands. I've been doing some work with Drybar and Steve Madden, which is really cool. So um, you can get some really cool ideas from working in legal and not just doing, um, it's good to just, you know, expand your skills. So um, okay, let me just advance. Okay, um, and I just want to make sure that Jim, you can see my dogs on the screen. Tell me yes, because I get panicky that people can't see my next slides. Okay, good. You guys can see them. Okay, so these are my two dogs. This is Lucy on the left, Scarlet on the right. And a lot of you know them from my other social channels. I've been trying to become a famous dog mom, um, momager. Here's the problem with them. They're home, they are bad. Uh, they're puppies, one is seven months, seven and a half months, Scarlet. The other one is um, 11 months. You can follow them on Instagram at Lucy Scarlet Frenchies. They uh, regularly Zoom bomb my presentations. They uh, throw things, they cause lots of havoc. I was doing a training for a major firm and they were ripping up wee wee pads in the background and the lawyers were very concerned and we had to um, stop the share, the screen share. And so if you see them doing something bad in the background, definitely let me know, but don't be alarmed. I'm just warning you. This is what happens when you have two very, very bad dogs. Also, if you know a dog trainer, also let me know because I am terrible at this. Okay. And if you have any tips on how to keep an orchid alive, please also put those in the chat or the Q&A. Okay, because I kill all plants. And I would, I'm gonna talk about how LinkedIn is like a plant. You have to keep it alive. Uh, you can't just rely on people coming to you. All right, so let's delve into the topic, although my dogs are very cute. If you please feel free to share your dogs with me or pets. So I clearly love LinkedIn and I have liked it for years and so much more since the pandemic. And obviously social distancing has made LinkedIn more important than ever before. And by the way, as we continue to come out of the pandemic, we are not going to stop using LinkedIn, okay? It is only going to become more and more popular and more and more important. And especially as our clients continue to get younger, and especially as our clients become more accustomed to the way things are now. I mean, listen, you know, I'm getting these uh, notifications about conferences in the fall, and I'm not so keen on going somewhere for three days. If there's a, you know, combination um, in person slash virtual component, I now have figured out that I don't need to travel for three days to go somewhere. And I think a lot of people have figured that out. There's going to be no like, flying to LA for a one hour meeting. And so we have realized, and by the way, did you know that 150 million additional people got on LinkedIn during the pandemic? So that's why when people say to me, oh, Steph, you know, I only have 420 LinkedIn connections. I say, well, I'm shocked because there are that many more people on LinkedIn. So you could really be resourceful and think about who you know. Okay. So, oh, they also bark at everything at the door too. Okay. So do you need a LinkedIn company page? Yes, absolutely. It doesn't matter if you have, if you have two employees or 2,000 employees. It, why? Because you get a platform. First of all, number one, 
You don't want anyone else to take your LinkedIn company page. Number two, people will think that you don't know how to use social media if you don't have a LinkedIn company page in the same way that they think that you don't know how to use social if you um, don't have your own LinkedIn page, right? Um, and it gives you a platform to post information about, you know, obviously what you do, promote your services, news, insights, et cetera, your people. And LinkedIn is one of the most powerful online marketing tools for branding, lead gen, recruiting, and CI, hands down, okay? Now, the personal LinkedIn page will always be more important and more valuable, but the company page, especially if you're doing recruiting, is tantamount. Okay, so there will be content, in my opinion, that is too promotional for your people to share themselves. And this is where your LinkedIn company page comes in handy. So somebody, um, um, Alice forwarded me an article today about like why you don't need a company page. And I have a lot of feelings on this. There are many reasons I think why you do. Number one, recruiting. Um, when you are recruiting for candidates on LinkedIn and you post a job, it gets hooked into your LinkedIn company page, like I, like I said earlier, and where they go then to find more information about you is that LinkedIn company page, number one. Number two, every employee who says that they work at your firm or company is um, connected to your company page. So people are going to click on the company page, look at your activity, and then see what your firm is doing, company is doing. Number three is this point. I do not like when people post, I am a super lawyer. I was just ranked in chambers. I just won this big um, victory for my client. It sounds so much better when the firm or company posts it and then the person shares it in a humble way, which there are so many ways to give them two lines of text to share it and it doesn't come off as them being very boastful. So that is where I think a LinkedIn company page can be very handy. And by the way, this is not just for a law firm. This is for any of the folks here who are at work at a PR firm or have your own recruiting firm or have your own business. Someone like myself, if I was um, won an award, I could very easily share it from my company page. You know, could be a little weird because it's just me, but if let's say I had a couple more employees, it seem a little less boastful when it comes from an entity versus an individual, in my opinion, okay? Plus, why do you want a company page? You get a bunch of statistics, analytics, and other tools that individuals don't get that I'll get into it a little bit later. So 80% of leads come from the, come from social media, come from LinkedIn. So I don't have to tell you guys why you're all on this webinar and there's a lot of people on here. So um, we know why. Okay. People say I should get more active on LinkedIn on the individual level and on the um, company page level. And they say to me, I don't know what to post. We don't have enough stuff. I have worked at firms, you know, I worked at big firms, right? And I'm gonna show you examples of big firms that are not doing it right. And I was, I've worked at very small firms. I took my last firm where I was the head of marketing from 600 LinkedIn followers to 7,000. And I'll tell you how I did it. And now I work for firms that are all over the, across the board. I work for a firm that has 200,000 LinkedIn followers and I manage the LinkedIn company page of a firm that has um, 500. So, and again, it's quality, not quantity. Same thing goes for your own networks, but you should be more active. And what do you do? You add value, right? Never selling yourself, never selling your company, your firm's products or people. Finding a voice is very hard for firms, very hard for individuals. People don't like to do this. They get uncomfortable. They don't want to share information. Um, they don't want to share stories. And I understand that, but there are ways to do this and still be professional. Consistently posting is the number one most important thing to stay top of mind for people. The algorithm does not work the same for when someone is following a company page versus following an individual. LinkedIn's algorithm, I'll get into in a little bit, is so wonky and it changes all the time. And so even if you work for a company, by the way, it doesn't necessarily mean that their posts are gonna appear in your feed. 
for whatever reason, for me, all I see lately is Verizon and in my feed, no matter how many times I tell LinkedIn, I don't want to see this ad and I'm not following them. And I don't know if anyone else is seeing Verizon or somebody like that all the time. Um, but your feed is um, curated by a number of different factors. So you need to train your employees on how to post, but then how to find your firm's posts and make it easy for them. I am not a fan of these tools that automate it because what these tools don't do is take, they take the personal out of it. They just post without um, personalized messages. And the worst thing you can do on LinkedIn is post content without an introductory uh, couple lines of text. It's like sending someone an email without a subject line or without any text forwarding a message without telling them why it's the worst thing you can do. So I don't believe those automated tools have the ability to add introductory text. So I would very much caution you against that. You know, it's great to automate things, but the personal is what's going to build your brand. Okay, storytelling, difficult for firms to do. However, you can do this with case studies. You can do this with recruiting, with telling stories about your people, with telling stories about community service, um, how you're coping during the pandemic, clever things you've done to bring your people together, history posts, and I'll go through that in a bit. Okay, the good news for everyone here is that the bar is so low for law firms <laughs> and professional service firms, which gives you a great opportunity to do great things, right? One thing to note is that the number of followers you have may be low, as will be your engagement on posts, right? So the number of likes. I regularly have people say to me, I love what you post on your, I have a company page, right? And I say, that's interesting because this person has never once liked to post, right, publicly. This means nothing. Know that there are people looking at you individually, your lawyers and yourself in what I call invisible user only mode. So they don't engage publicly, but they're looking at things. Everybody's looking at you, Googling you every day, looking at your content, but not necessarily engaging. So the number of likes that you have may be low, or maybe it seems like, you know, your lawyers will say to you, what's the point of doing this? Like, oh, I only got two likes. The point of doing it is that you are a public entity and you have to do it because it's expected now, okay? And your clients and prospects are checking you out every day when they're thinking of using you. So will you get a client from your company page? No, but it's another vetting credential, right? It's another thing that we use to say, okay, this firm knows their stuff right? Um, and again, I'm seeing some comments, but I will go through those at the end. So thank you for those. Okay. So let me go through this, but don't be deterred. And, and it takes a while to build a following. By the way, I, I started my company, you know, in earnest, maybe like a year ago or so. I didn't really have a company page until, I don't know, like I guess a year ago and I've built it up, but you know, I post different content. I, you know, I have 7,000 or so LinkedIn connections and I have about 500 people following my company page. I don't post the exact same thing on both pages, but I could, because by the way, there is absolutely no way to spam anybody on LinkedIn, just so you know. So I want to show you this because People think the bigger the firm with the more followers, the better they do social, and it's not true. And this isn't to call out these firms that they're not doing a good job because they do with other posts. But I, I just wanna show you, look at this. These firms, Baker McKenzie has almost 300,000 followers. DLA Piper has almost 200,000 followers, okay? Do you see here that the engagement on these posts is very low for the number of followers they have, okay? The one for DLA Piper on the on the right has zero likes, no comments, okay? I can tell you why on all of these posts. And granted, these were posted, you know, two days ago, less than 24 hours, but 
they should have, if you're posting right, you should have likes within the first five, six hours, okay? And if you don't, LinkedIn's gonna ding you. So if you don't get comments and likes, um, LinkedIn, within those first critical six hours, LinkedIn's algorithm, which is a combination of AI and individual people says, your post is not important. We're not even actually going to move it up, right? The post, um, let's look at Baker McKenzie's post. 10 likes on that post on the, the this is a, a research report, okay? And then the other post is, um, a, looks like he's, um, it's an, a speaking engagement or it's a tool and report with a quote, four likes. DLA, the other post is, an upcoming speaking engagement. Okay, I can tell you why I believe these posts didn't go anywhere and we'll get into why. It's a combination of employee engagement, lack of employee engagement, lack of the poster engagement and the wrong hashtags. It's all of these things in working against the algorithm and it's also, by the way, you know how people say you shouldn't put a link in a post? It takes people off, you know, LinkedIn doesn't like when an individual puts a link, a hyperlink. So like you see how all of these have a hyperlink that takes you to their websites. That is only true for individuals. And that is true, by the way. You will have lower engagement on your post as a person if you put a blog link, a website link, a link to a webinar, okay? the what you do is that's why people put link in comments it's annoying but that's why people do it and they give you 1300 characters to write content linkedin doesn't want you to take people away from their from their site um that is not the same with linkedin company pages in fact um there is no research that supports that so you can feel free to do this here so these are the reasons I'm just going to see if anyone has anything in here. Um, yeah, and you're asking about hashtag limits and rules of posts. Yes, I'm going to get guys into all of this. Here's the thing, hashtags, no more than five. The, the golden number on recently, the golden number of hashtags, and I have a whole section on hashtags and I'm doing a separate course on hashtags in a month, um, which I'll tell you guys about. The golden rule of hashtags on LinkedIn, no more than five, and they're saying the sweet spot is three. These hashtags are bad. You know why? They're too general. That's why. I'll talk to you about that in a minute. All of these litigation, compliance, class action, digitalization, regulators, student debt, evictions, consumer finance, these all have hundreds of thousands of followers, okay, which means your content gets buried the second you post it. That's why these are bad. More is bad when it comes to LinkedIn. Um, well, I'll get into that in a minute. That's bad. How many times should you post as a company? Two times a day at most, in my opinion. And you don't want to post within a couple of hours. You should give yourself four hours in between posts or LinkedIn also may um, ding your posts thinking that they're spam. Okay. So um, don't post too many times in a day. Okay, so let me, uh, there's so many more things to talk about. Let me go through this. So if you don't tap into the valuable networks of your employees who may have and do have many more or different connections than your employees, um, than your company page, you will not be successful with your LinkedIn company page, period. Okay, so let's say Jim has 2,500 LinkedIn connections. The company page has 2,000. There may be some overlap. Great. The odds again, of if Jim shares the same post that the company page shares of the of both of that of uh, one person seeing it the same post are probably zero zero one in my opinion okay because of all the factors working against with the algorithm and the time of day that person is on LinkedIn and all of these things okay um, in fact you should they should share it the company and that other person and another person at the firm who knows that same contact to get. And, and you should be sending it out by email as well because you wanna make sure a lot of people see the post. So participation by your employees is key, okay? So spend the time to train them. Yesterday, I trained a bunch of lawyers who didn't understand why they needed to share the firm's content. 
And then they didn't understand why they needed to put introductory text when they did share, right? They didn't know what the featured section was. They didn't know how to find the firm's posts, okay? Some of them weren't connected, mapped to the right company on LinkedIn. So sometimes they'll fill out a company name, but they will have entered it incorrectly with LLC or a, an earlier entity, and they're not getting the logo of the company. So they're actually not affiliated with your organization. Make sure they know how to do that. This sounds basic, but it's not, right? You need your employees to be sharing content. And by the way, for all those lawyers at your firm who think that LinkedIn's not important, that especially the ones at the top, it is. And I'll talk to you about how your managing partners and your executive committees and why it's important for them to have a voice on LinkedIn, because they really do help to um, shepherd others and get others on board about why this should, why they should be sharing. So when it comes to LinkedIn success strategies, I mean, this is something I use for individuals, but the same rules apply for companies contributing, participating, being intentional, trying out new things, watching and listening and learning. So looking at your competitors, um, I certainly do this for my clients and I look at my own competitors, being consistent, giving content without any expectation of anything in return, helping others, and then not bragging too much, even when you are posting successes, right? These are some components on my own LinkedIn company page. I just, you know, did a hodgepodge, but events. I'm going to talk about why it's important to post events. And it's not just webinars or events, um, little events you're doing. It's also important to, I think, to post big, um, sometimes sponsorships. And um, if you're doing like a PLI conference or things like that, your company page can follow three hashtags. I find that helpful in terms of um, branding your firm and just being able to click on that and being able to see you know, what's going on in those areas, but other people knowing you know, what you stand for. Um, you'll see here, you've got analytics. So it's good to just look at those analytics. And then the most important thing of all that changed over the pandemic is the ability to see the actual number of people who follow you by clicking on where it says 444, 449. You can click on that number guys. And you can actually see the people who follow you and when it's a treasure trove of information. You currently can't easily download it, but there is a Google plugin that I have that you can um, use to download the information. So if you're not, if you haven't done that yet, you need to. The information in that, you, you used to only be able to tell like segmentation, where they were from, what kind of titles they had. Now you can see exactly who they are. It's your know, competitors, your clients, um, friends, your employees, alumni. It's so many different things, but you need to take charge of that list because also you should be making sure that those people are on your email marketing list, right? Even if you don't have their emails directly, you need to research those people and vice versa. This is important. Okay. And I talked about this. Oh, the LinkedIn algorithm, basically you can't spam anybody. Don't assume that everybody can see all of your posts because they, they don't. And there is a difference in post reactions. Make sure your people know this when you're training them, right? It seems superficial. However, a like is worth less than a comment and a share because those take more time and effort, okay? And you need to respond to the comments, right? Um, meaningfully, right? Like, so you, I mean, you know, even a thank you would be better, but like, if you see people commenting on your post, obviously don't give legal advice, you should comment back something, right? Thank you. We appreciate this, blah, blah, blah. Um, these take more effort. This helps with the algorithm of increasing the reach. And obviously, in po in posting engaging content regularly is the key to success on LinkedIn for individuals and company pages because it gives you extra clout with LinkedIn in terms of you then appearing higher in their um, with their algorithm in terms of when they decide to show your content to a wider audience. Okay. Okay. When should you post content on your LinkedIn company page? This is pretty self-evident, right? 
you should post it during the day, you know, your local time zone to try to reach people. You can obviously use Hootsuite and uh, Sprout Social to do this for you. Um, I like to post content in the morning. I don't post on Monday mornings. I hate Monday mornings. I don't post after 8 p.m. I do post on the weekends. I find weekend content is great. And I actually was talking to some of you guys may know Eva Wisnick. She was, um, she read an article I wrote and I said, post on the weekends, you may have more luck. And she said she has. And so I find there's a more captive audience. I think no one knows what day of the week it is anyway anymore, but um, don't post after eight because your content will get superseded by content from the next day. So um, try normal business hours. Okay. Very easy to create a page. Also, you can create a showcase page. There are also pages you can create for products too. So I work with a legal data company and I'm working on creating product pages for them to highlight the specific products that they have for their clients. A showcase page, I wouldn't do it unless you really already feel like you have a big enough audience. Um, there are some law firms that have sub entities, right? Like maybe you have a lobbying arm or you sell a product that may be something you want to do. If any of you are volunteers for the Legal Marketing Association, you know that like the Legal Marketing Association has showcase pages for the, um, the regional, um, uh, the, the regions, that's a showcase page. So um, if you're interested in learning more about that, message me and I can talk to you about it. Okay. So if any of you have ever had the problem where you can't claim your LinkedIn company page, there are ways to do it or it was a, under a different company name and you merged, don't fear. Um, it requires like, you know, paperwork, but it can all be done. And make sure that you have more than one company admin. There are five types of administrators now. You want to be a super admin if you are going to be um, adding content, but you don't want to have one person. I worked at a firm where the person, the only person who was the admin had left the firm on bad terms and it was a nightmare to get access again. So um, also note, you don't have to be connected to someone to add them as an admin anymore. So that's really good but make sure you have multiple people and make sure on your departure checklist is removing someone when they leave the firm and they are an admin. I work with firms that also keep partners as admins because they want them to be able to add connections to follow the page. If you do that, delete them as an admin after they've done this job, okay? Because I've had the issue, and maybe some of you have, I'd love to know, put it in the chat, of those people then accidentally posting, not realizing they were in admin mode, posting their own content on the company page, right? So in order to invite connections to like your page, you have to be an admin. And they didn't realize what they were doing. So if you've had that issue, just make sure you take away their access after they've added people. Okay. So get the basics down first on your company page. The banner image is very important. Um, I change up the banner image on a lot of my clients' um, pages for different, different products, different things they have going on, right? So like, for example, Women's History Month, I changed the banner to feature women at the firm for one firm. I know for Pride Month, a lot of firms are changing their logo to um, the pro to a pride logo or to a re um, to reference pride. Um, make sure your firm obviously you know can walk the walk with these things. Um, and I give people options. You know I I and I always um, give individuals the options as well so they can change their own LinkedIn banner image. Creator mode, by the way, if you have it for individuals, it's coming to company pages as well. I'm going to get into that in a little bit, but the creator mode for video will be coming to company pages. So you will be able to put a video in the back of your cover image. That is cool, guys. So just planting that seed for the future of what kind of video you would want. And my dog, Scarlett, just decided to join us. So say hi, everyone, to Scarlett. Um, your tagline 
it's important. Uh, think about it. You get a finite number of characters. I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, make sure these are consistent with your other social platforms as well. Your about section, make sure it is not just about you. It reflects your company um, and then use keywords, right? These are all, you know, these are all for SEO too. So trackable, all those things. You get to use a CTA button. So a call to action button, make sure that button is obviously probably going to go to your website, but make sure it makes sense. Make sure that you optimize that. And you want to maybe use, um, you know, an UTM, uh, like your UTM button um, to have any backlinks um, for tracking purposes. And showcase pages, um, we'll talk about, we talked about that a little bit, but I won't get into that too much today. Okay. So how do you become more discoverable to easily facilitate connecting? You want to add a pay. This is something so many people miss. They miss this for their own e-signatures, for their own, your own LinkedIn page, like your, you know, your own personal LinkedIn page. Add a page link to your company page in your e-signature. Why wouldn't you do that, right? So I don't know why folks don't do it, but you really should do. So, um, and I'm just looking at some of these comments, but I'll, I'll, I'll get to them later. Okay, I didn't know if there was an emergency. Okay, so you want to make sure that you have your company page and your lawyer's email signatures in the same way they have their bios, right? So I would do your personal LinkedIn profile um, URL, which should be the friendly URL, right? So it's mine is, you know, LinkedIn.com, I N Stephanie Marone, not LinkedIn.com, I N Stephanie Marone, Q4WP90, which makes me sound like a robot, right? Everyone needs to go and claim their friendly LinkedIn URL. If you don't know how to do it, let me know. I have a quick article on that. Add a LinkedIn follow button to your company page on your website. Okay, make sure also in your email newsletters that you let people know you have a LinkedIn company page, right? And so follow us on LinkedIn. We post news, blah, blah, blah. I always do that. I put that in my um, email. So not just email newsletter, but any um, webinars you're doing, it's just another reinforcement. Okay, in terms of mastering LinkedIn company pages, use the at sign when you want to mention somebody. So if you wanted to mention me today in a post, you would just do the at sign in my name and it would come up. You don't need to be connected to me. Same thing with an entity. So you could do the at sign for a company, right? Um, or an entity, an organization. Enlist help from your loyal clients and brand advocates. Okay. So I do not like inviting random people to follow my company page. And I don't think you should either. I think it comes off a little desperate. And so I only invite people to follow my company page if I know them and I really think that they would benefit from it. People say to me, you know, what do you post that's different on your company page versus what you post um, on your own page? I post a lot of different things there, um, not the same content. And I also know, again, like I said, people won't necessarily see everything I personally post and vice versa, but I change it up, right? Um, you know, your loyal clients and brand advocates will post on your behalf. The other thing I do is I post about other people through my company page, okay? So I have a series, many of you may know it, the Women Who Wow series. And I will post the Women Who Wow series on my company page um, because I just, I can't post so much through my own personal page. I don't want to seem like I'm over posting. Post it there. Guess what happens? They share it from my company page. People start to then see my company page and then they sometimes may follow my company page or not, right? That's up to them. You could do the same thing for your own company page. Mention influencers and companies you admire in page updates. Share an article someone wrote. Oh, you thought this webinar was great. Mention me on your company page. Guess what? I'll probably comment. I'll share it. I'll like it. You then come up in my feed, right? That's the algorithm. That's the beauty of LinkedIn. Some more tips. Um, I always recommend creating a content calendar for your company page as well as individuals. I use the free calendars that HubSpot has. I'm happy to send you guys a link to that. This is recorded. 
So you will get this um, in terms of the slides, by the way, someone asked, I'll give you some of the slides. I have a, I'll have a follow-up article as well. It goes without saying to post consistently and helpful content. And then adjust content based on the analytics. You do not get the same analytics as a person that you do with a company page. I think that makes having a company page worth it in addition to all the other things I said today. Um, you can also play around a lot more with video and visual content. Video does so well on LinkedIn. Short video, obviously it cuts you off, but I would, I would say LinkedIn is a place to experiment. So try your company page, try it out. And then using hashtags correctly on LinkedIn is very important. Okay. So what do you post, right? Especially when you don't have a ton of content. Celebrate your team, right? Post about your employees' accomplishments. There is a place now on LinkedIn company pages where you can see what's going on with your employees. So I don't know if you guys know about that, but it's a tab about employees. Um, get to know posts. So I do this all the time for my clients. Get to know an employee, get to know a lawyer. And all you do is take the first few lines of their bios, make a nice custom image. I use canva.com, which you should uh, as well, and link back to their bios, right? Lateral lawyer posts. Check out what Lowenstein Sandler does with their lateral posts. I love them. They do like um, basically like 100 days into the person being there and they um, look at how it's going. And I think that's great. Reusing old photos. How many of us have firm histories and uh, pictures and old videos, right? I turned those into a TBT and an FBF campaign for those of you who don't know what that is. It was just a throwback Thursday and flashback Friday. You know, take a picture from a firm retreat, a picture of people playing softball, whatever it is. Um, a picture from a successful CLE, you know, on this day, we blah, blah, blah. Hashtag holidays. So I have a list of all the hashtag holidays. Those are like um, National Coffee Day or National Love a Groundhog Day or, you know, whatever it is, right? Those are good days to intersperse. I think this, this is Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, great days to intersperse with the content that, the, the, you know, the more substantive content that you have. It shouldn't all be about you, 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 your firm, your accomplishments, especially right now when we are still in this, you know, we're still in the pandemic. And by the way, everything has changed. I'm telling my clients to not do headshots anymore with um, full ties and to change the way they write their bios from, you know, Mr. Jones to Jim. So we are more casual, I hope, as an entire collective industry. I'd encourage you to think more casually and letting people get to know you as a firm. You can still be substantive and still be great lawyers, but just like, you know, peek behind the curtain a little bit. I love to do practice area and lawyer spotlights. So, so easy, just repurpose an image, you know, get to know our labor and employment group and, um, you know, repurpose and go direct back to the, um, to the practice area description. You can repost interesting articles, um, spotlight on diversity, CSR, pro bono recruiting, and then pull out quotes. One of my favorite things to do from past articles, press features, and client alerts. Earned versus owned media. I'll show you some examples, but obviously, you know, I, all of these, a lot of these examples are owned media, which are news you're creating about your company organization versus getting quoted in the New York Times and then reposting that, right? So um, I didn't even mention, you know, what to do with, with that kind of stuff, but obviously you're gonna intersperse press mentions and webinars and upcoming speaking engagements and sponsoring conferences, but you're gonna pepper those in with this stuff as well, right? So here are some examples of some LinkedIn company posts You'll see that National Receptionist Day, that's like a hashtag holiday. We've got Women's History Month here, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving, some surveys. There's a Q&A on the bottom about for recruiting. I love the history post. So there's one from Sidley up at the top left. There's an alumni um, spotlight. So alumni is another great thing here. Um, and I'm just looking to see. Um, there's some other things. Um, 
thanking your employee, your client here from um, Fenwick. And then let me go back. So um, I like I love that Struck did a Hanukkah post. I mean, that might not work for you. Here are some other things, you know, using icons, bringing some webinars to life. Um, I thought the Joan Day example of Chambers was a good one to just sounds a little bit, it just is a little more interesting than what I normally see. And then I see a lot of firms do this one and done. They, they you know, create great content and they post it just once. This is taking a speaking engagement and turning it into a Cranes article and then pulling it out into a quote. And this is like three or four posts. So, you know, extend the shelf life of one piece of content and turn it into multiple multiple posts. So, um, you know, you can do that. And I see someone saying, you know, what to do if you have too much content? Yeah, that's a tough one. Um, you have to pick and choose. I think you, you really have to say, you know, what, what are we going to focus on? Like, what are our core practices? And we have to give love to everyone. You are not going to be able to share everything. You may want to also like, um, parse it out on your other channels. So obviously, you know, I'm not talking about Instagram and Twitter and Facebook today, but you may have to put different content on those other channels because you can't post everything on, on LinkedIn. You, you really should not be posting more, I think, than two times per day, or you are going to, it's going to be too much content. I love the evergreen posts that you can repost multiple times. And then, like I said, hashtag holidays, you know, here are some examples, World Kindness Day, Diwali, Hanukkah, and I have an article that has all of the holidays throughout the year that I can send to you guys. One other thing guys to note is that LinkedIn company pages can use um, stories. So um, here are some ideas of what you can do for LinkedIn stories. Most law firms are not using stories. And, and by the way, when you resize an image for stories, all for LinkedIn, it's the same, the image size on Canva is an Instagram story. It's this, and you can use that for a fleet. So a fleet is the story for um, Twitter. It's the perfect size. What I love about, about uh, stories on um, LinkedIn that's different from a personal story on LinkedIn is that you can put a hyperlink. That is the great difference if your lawyer share it versus your company. So if you have a webinar or an article, you can actually link to it. That's going to change. Your, your people will get the ability to do it, but you don't have it now. Most companies and law firms are not using stories, so you should, okay? So here are all examples. Basically, a story expires within 24 hours. You can post it multiple times. You can post it every day. You can see exactly who views your story. Use it. Do it. These are great things. Um, job postings. I see so many firms needing to hire right now. And also, that could be a company page. Um, you should definitely post your, comp your um, job postings as specific um, posts, not just on the job area, if you really want to highlight a job, but these are all different ways you can have a carousel of different posts. Okay, so here are the bunch of tools that I use when I'm making company page posts and posts for myself. Um, I do a separate webinar on these. I won't get into these today, but again, if you're interested in that, let me know. Um, most of you should be on my mailing list, so you'll um, you'll hopefully get a notification about these. And in terms of how to get more followers, um, invite strategically connections to follow your page. Create an event from your LinkedIn company page. This has helped a lot of my clients, although there is something tricky about this. Sometimes they think they're attending an event um, just because they RSVP, they don't realize they actually have to take the extra step of signing up for a Zoom, you know, a link or whatever it is. And so then the day comes of the event and they're like responding in the LinkedIn group and confused. So you, that's just one little caveat. You can launch a LinkedIn follower campaign. So this is a paid sponsored ad designed to get you more followers. That's in part how I got Charter Krinsky's followers from 600 to 7,000. Um, you know, it was tricky. And there are a lot of things that go into us to, to doing that because you have to maintain really good content to keep those followers or they can unclick you. Analyze your competitors pages. The best, you know, LinkedIn company pages will give you, um, you know, people who follow your page also follow X. And I think that's very helpful. I 
always follow company pages and other people and look to see what they're doing. You should too. It gives a lot of inspiration, ideas, et cetera. And share job postings on your page. Probably the number one best way to get people to follow you because the sneaky thing LinkedIn does is if someone applies for a job on your company page, they automatically make it so that they're following you. They have to unclick a box. I go through training people every day on LinkedIn. And what happens is that those people don't realize they're following all these companies. And I'm like, did you ever apply to a job at that place? And they say, yeah. So that's, that's sneaky. So this is that to that point. Um, the default is to start following a company and it's very sneaky. So use it to your advantage, right? Post a job, make sure if your jobs are just listed on your website and on Indeed, I, you know, I don't know if you're getting the best, um, you know, I don't know if you're, you're really maximizing visibility. So I would just recommend that you also post on LinkedIn. I don't even know that it costs a lot of money to post a job. I think it might, I think it's pretty reasonable or even free. So this is how you invite connections um, to follow your page. And so you get a hundred credits per month. There is no way to spam somebody. So like if I, if I had another employee and somebody else invited the, another person, we couldn't invite the same person. And it, if somebody doesn't accept, it's fine. You don't get a notification. So like you'll see Robert Algieri hasn't accepted my request for a really long time. Um, so we have to let him know to accept. Um, he, and so you can search by, you see like that, those are all drop downs, locations, current companies, schools, industries. So I can search everybody I know, for example, at Proskauer, because I used to work there. And then I can check off a box and invite everybody to follow my company. And then LinkedIn company page events. If you're not using this, please do it. This is um, a page I manage um, for Legal Value Network. And you'll see here, I can go and I can and look at all the different options I have, right? Invite connections, sponsor an update, post a job, create an event, create a showcase page, manage admins, edit public URL, deactivate page, right? So if I go to create an event and you'll see I created a few events there. I've got, um, you know, there are, these are events I created in the past and they live there and then I can invite people to attend the events. And you can also then, invite the speakers and then um, have a chat in the events. And I found these to be really helpful with visibility and then people can invite other people to your events. We did this also like for the Legal Marketing Association and a number of other associations, but I think law firms aren't doing this as much and they should. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go quick because I have a few more things. Um, get your employees involved. Um, if you look at these statistics and these come, um, these come, I believe these came from LinkedIn, but I can tell you guys that the, your employees are your best brand advocates, hands down. And you wanna help them optimize their LinkedIn profile so they understand how to share content. Encourage executives and prominent leaders to put the at sign and mention your page because that will drive people to the page, right? And they let people know you have a page and encourage your employees to participate in LinkedIn groups. It'll also help the visibility. Remember, you can't spam people. You want all your employees to get to that coveted 500 plus connections on LinkedIn so that the actual number of connections doesn't show in their profiles. And because I know that they know more than 500 people, like I said. These are some things that have been helpful to me. Um, I think they'll be helpful to you in terms of what what I um, it, what's coming down the pipeline for LinkedIn company pages. This is very exciting. So, LinkedIn events is getting majorly enhanced. So it's a good time to start using them. There will be speaker links, the ability to do advertising, registration collection, and then automatic notification for different um, in terms of followers and registration things. A My Company tab on company pages is coming to increase employee engagement. And it's going to include employee milestones. So like how long somebody has been working at the company and then you can share that, right? Like we get that notification now for different people but you don't get it for the companies. And so that's a really great way to do a shout out to your people on LinkedIn. New hires, which I said, you know, you want to do a get to know post. This is a great thing, right? You can do a post very automatically. Com different kinds of company posts, which we'll get more information about, highlights, employee activities. So let's say 
Julian is a um, volunteer for the Volunteer Lawyers for the Arts. You'll get a notification when he updates that on his profile and you can then update that and share it to your network. It's going to basically connect the dots and build a more cohesive community, okay? And then trending employee content. So let's say one of your employees posted something and it's doing really well in LinkedIn. You will get a notification about it and you can then decide to share it, which I think would be great to share it from their page, okay? So these are all coming soon. Okay, so I'm not gonna have time to talk about hashtags today, but I hope you will join me for a course on that. I have so many different slides on this, but the five types of hashtags are these, the topic-based, the expressive one, the branded, the event, and the hashtag holiday. Trust me on this. We want a, a time to go through all of these, but I will uh, definitely um, do this another day. Um, I'll leave you with where I'm doing a webinar for women who wow, but men are absolutely welcome to come, please, with uh, Gina Passarella, the uh, editor-in-chief of American Lawyer, uh, Diane Costigan, who is the director of well-being and wellness, uh, well-being and mental health or something like that at Winston and Strawn, and Carrie Moore, who is a licensed therapist at a good place on May 20th on how to create a mentally healthy workplace culture and law firms. Uh, if you want more information, let me know. And now I'm going to take some questions. So that's all I have for you guys. Um, so let me look at all of the questions in here and see what we have. Okay. So how do you convince lawyers it's worth their time to share and comment? Okay, I would show them their competition and show them success stories of people where it's working. Show them success stories of anybody who's gotten new business or where it has actually led to a rekindled relationship. Lawyers are swayed by research. Lawyers are swayed by people where it's work. That's at least what I have found. So I try to show them when I present to lawyers, I show them success stories of new business and where um, either they, other people have gotten clients or where their competitors have what they're doing. I find that to be compelling. Okay. Um, I said, somebody said, how do I create my company page? So I have um, an article on that, but also I think I showed very quickly how to do that, but I can help you with that. Um, there is no, okay, is there a link you can add to email that will automatically have a person follow your company page when they click the link and then they have to follow the, the click the follow button? No, and I wish, Alice, there was. There is no way you have to actually manually agree to follow. So unfortunately, no. Um, somebody asked, wouldn't you say this using stories would mean that you have to have enough followers to make it worth it? No, because, um, I think it's a good place to, you have to start somewhere. So I don't think it's a bad idea to just start trying with stories. Um, you know, you wanna have, I would say at least 50 followers to start with the stories or else it's probably not worth it. Um, so start there. Um, let's see, have you ever used quotes from reviews as a post? And if yes, what were the review, what were the results? Um, so I have used quotes from Chambers rankings for lawyers. And the results were good, really good. Like somebody said um, that it was like, the person was a really great lawyer and they were um, really excited to see them here. Um, I think it's the way you phrase it so that it doesn't come off like too, too boastful. Um, and let's say, what's the best way to post an article or a client alert? Ooh, good one. So the best way I think to do it is to take out, okay, so I think doing them as carousel posts. I love carousel posts. Did you guys know what a carousel post is? Um, so carousel post is, so I take, a, I make it in Canva and I take out some key phrases. Um, anyone wants, to, do you guys want me to show you how I did it for a client? I don't know if you want me to show, but um, I basically made like a few slides and then I posted them on LinkedIn um, as, as um, okay, do you guys want me to show you? I'll show you. Um, let me share my screen again. 
Um, okay, no judgment zone here about how many tabs I have open, right? Okay, let me show you guys what I did. Can you guys see my screen? Am I, um, yes, yes? Okay, yes, okay. All right, this is a firm um, I work with. And can you, okay, this is one of the things I did to bring a client alert to life. Can you guys see that I took a slide basically? I did this in Canva and I put some of the top things for this COBRA subsidy on it, right? Um, and then can you guys see there's another one? Okay, so this is a carousel post. So it's basically taking a PDF, which by the way, you can name it anything. And this is actually searchable. So this is with that, this has SEO. So I took a PDF and then I, I made it into, um, I uploaded it like this and I, kind of brought the client alert to life. You know, I put a bunch of text here, but I tried to bring it to life this way, right? And so I can scroll through. And I also did the same thing with, um, so I did it here as well. I did it like with a longer one. And I don't know why you guys can't see it, but Oh, my computer's going to crap out. I also did the same thing with super lawyers. So I did each person as a slide. Okay. So that was sort of something I did, um, you know, to just make it a little different. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, okay, so I know we're out of time. I wanna thank you guys all for joining and um, I will send over the slides uh, to, I mean, the um, recording um, and I am really happy that you guys all joined. So I hope you guys all have a great day and thank you very much guys, take care.